I'm Nicole Rafferty. I'm Jason Goldner. I'm Dave Trevera. I'm Bob Bevis. Welcome to the Inspiring People podcast. Let's get started. Welcome everyone to the second episode of the Inspiring People podcast. My name is Nicole Rafferty with Ultimate Software, and I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Jason. Hello, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful. And uh, and also want to take a second to introduce our guest and welcome him today, uh, Dave Barbado, CEO and co-founder of Talent Retriever. So welcome, Dave. Hi, thank you for having me. Excited to be here today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. So just to give you a little bit of background on Dave, if you don't know him already, um, Dave's someone that I've been lucky enough to get to know over the past several years. Um, in fact, he's actually been kind enough to welcome Jason and I as squatters at the Talent Retriever Tech Jam booth <laughs> a couple of times now. We can share a couple of fun stories from that. But uh, even in those short times together, it's really easy to see that Dave and his wife, Cheryl, have created a really special and unique community at Talent Retriever. So it's kind of no surprise that they've evolved into a multiple time best place to work winner and have earned a reputation as one of the top talent acquisition partners for such recognizable names as LogMeIn, Rapid7, Intuit, Constant Contact, and many others. Uh, if Dave's not in the office, you'll find him either out running. In fact, he told us he squeezed in a workout this morning, uh, skiing with his girls or taking in a game at Fenway with a Fenway Frank and a nice cold beer, as he'll tell you, of course. And aside from being a husband and father, Dave's other big passion is the work that he does with housing families to combat homelessness in greater Boston. So again, Dave, welcome. We are so thrilled to have you. Thanks, Nicole. I, I, I got I, I to gotta take save that recording because I'm going to play that every time Cheryl says, like, you know, question something I'm doing and I'm play that back because that sounded so nice. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if she ever asks you why you're so busy or why you can't do the laundry or something like that. Uh, <laughs> No, she's, she, she's, a, she's a great partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so fun, honestly, to get to interact and, and work with you guys and get to know you over the past few years because you do have just such a great chemistry that really translates to the entire culture and talent retriever. And so, Thank you very much. Yeah, so first, before we kind of jump on into the questioning, I know we were talking before um, everybody came on the line. Congratulations. I know you, like Jason, have, uh, have a daughter, I believe, that just was admitted into college. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, she uh, it, she's a musical theater student, so it was a long, arduous process of uh, auditions, and uh, it's a little different than traditional uh, applying to the schools because you have to actually go and audition for the, for what you're going to do as well, and then get accepted to that program. So, uh, yeah, so she's going to go to a, a small school out in uh, Wisconsin called Viterbo. So we're very excited, and uh, it's just great that we got that part of the process out of the way before everything got locked down because that would have really impacted her audition process. So good stuff. Thank you for. Thank you for that. Yeah, I can't even imagine, you know, just thinking about that audition process, actually wonderful segue. So I know with everything going on, one of the things that I really love to understand from the guests that we're talking to is how this whole crisis has affected not only Talent Retriever, but you and your family personally as well. Tell me a little bit more about, you know, from the college interview process to, you know, to just your business. How, How have you been affected by everything that's going on currently? No, thanks, Nicole. Yeah, the, um, it, it's been, it's, you know, we, we unfortunately had been through something similar back in, to, not similar to the pandemic, but, uh, you know, such a crash in 2008. So we, we thought that that playbook we built back then on the business side was something we would hopefully just be able to kind of keep in a glass jar and never have to open again. But we unfortunately had to open that again. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's always tough because you, you, you form a bond with, the team and the people and and our kids know everybody too. They're in the office all the time. They're always, you know, they're, they're school, school, which is, you know, a five minute walk up the street from where our office is in North Andover. So they come down to the office all the time. So they know everybody and they get to know people and, um, and they feel the connection there as well. So, you know, we've had to, you know, similar to everyone else, uh, we've had to do furloughs. We've had to do some comp reductions. We've had to do a lot of restructuring. The thing that we, we really wanted to make sure we did though, it was, we always looked at, you know, one of our core values is respect. So everything we did, we had the team in the center and we just said, okay, what do we do here? How do we make these adjustments and keep everybody in a, you know, and do all this stuff in a respectful manner so that we're really looking at, you know, how to lessen the impact on everybody, but keep everybody informed and, and understanding what's happening. And on the family side, you know, the kids get it. They, you know, they've been, they grew up with this business. So they, they understand it. They know that the passion we have toward it and, 
um, what it what it means and um, they've been awesome you know they they're doing their thing at home and they're uh, you know they're 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 helping us out in every way they can actually Sophia our oldest daughter the one just got accepted actually does some work for talent retriever too so um, you know so it's uh, it's it's been a challenge but I know it's one that we'll 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 we'll, we'll get through and we we'll get through it together. Oh, well, that's, I think it makes it easier when you have such an incredible culture and team, which I've been lucky enough to witness with Talent Retriever. You guys truly are like a family um, from everything that I've seen. And, and by the way, if anybody doesn't know Dave, if you've ever been to Tech Jam, you may also know him as the man who has the booth that has the mechanical bowl in the center of it. <laughs> so or last year, because it was raining, I think you had the you had the racing horses, but there's always some kind of fun theme going on too, right? Yeah, yeah. We were supposed to have a mechanical unicorn last year, and then with the storm coming, and, and who you know, back the, at that time, that storm seemed such like such a big thing <laughs> to, have to deal with. Um, I'm sure the Mass TLC folks would agree. They'd be like, at that time, they thought that was such a big, and now it's like, oh my god, that's such a small thing to deal with compared to this. But yeah, we changed quickly, and we got those uh, ho- the r- horse racing game, which actually turned out to be even better. And uh, I, I think that's a, that's one of the things about our team too. They're they're very uh, they're very nimble. They're very flexible, and they're just good-hearted people. Um, you know, uh, they really are. That's that's the part that was tough about everything. And you know, our our whole desire is that we'll come back and we'll we'll have that team we'll have that team rebuilt, and we're staying connected with them throughout this whole thing. So yeah. Well, and I think staying connected is another thing that I've noticed is a real strength uh, of yours as well. And it's an area where I think you might be able to help a lot of people that were joined by uh, in, in this discussion. So there are a lot of HR leaders for whom managing virtual teams is a new experience, but I know for you, it's something you guys have been doing at Talent Retriever for over 15 years. So any advice that you can offer to people that are adjusting to this new normal? Yeah, no, that's a good point. That was, that was part of the thing that was actually easy for us is that we already had a component of the, of the team that worked virtual all the time. And everybody had the ability to work from home as well as come into an office, our New York office or our Boston office. And so transitioning that was fine. But yeah, some of the things that we've always been, you know, been good about are communicating and transparency with the team, making sure that they realize what's going on at all times. Um, so one of the things we started doing since, since this all happened too, is we're doing more videos. So sometimes it's hard. I remember earlier I mentioned about respect of our team. So when we first started to talk to the team about need, you know, that what was happening and that we were going to have to go to a furlough and that there were going to be some changes. I didn't, it was going to be hard to get people throughout the U S on the phone at the same time and knowing that they had kids behind them and that some of them had different challenges they were trying to deal with. So we did a video. Um, we didn't furlough them by video. God, no, <laughs> we did a video just to kind of explain, Hey, here's, you know, you guys know what we've been doing. We've been communicating with you, but want to give you an update on where we're at and what's happening and what's going to happen next. Um, and did this by video so that you guys could watch this and, and, and take this in when you're comfortable to do so and then share it with your family as, as you desire after you watch the video. So we really tried to think about all of that stuff as we've been communicating that message. And then since then, we've continued that process of doing our, uh, you know, we, we've got our, we've got something called the fun tribe and that fun tribe creates different events and uh, they do everything from we we also have a, a VTO program which is a volunteer time off plan so they do charitable work as well and what's been awesome is they're still keeping that going so they have their fun tribe meeting they have their their community you know they're building out like this week we're doing virtual pictionary so we're keeping our culture even though we're all separate even though we're all home we're trying to think of ways of how can we continue to carve out time to make sure that a we're still getting the information that each other needs but also making sure we're all checking in with each other that we're all smiling. Uh, they did a, they had a 75 day workout challenge that they were involved with. They kept that thing going through all this. So they've been trying to make sure people are still, you know, keeping up with their exercise. And, um, you know, I, I think we, we kind of took everything we were doing and said, all right, let's, you know, we don't have to make major changes here, but let's just keep, go back to the core values, go back to the things that made us who we are and just keep doing them. But now we just do them over zoom. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible though. And I, there are a couple things you said there, uh, that I just want to touch on one, the videos I'll tell you. And, and for those listening in, our CEO has done something similar and I, I can't tell you how wonderful it's been where he's had very candid con- conversations and, obviously we've got a workforce now, our, our combined company that's come together is, you know, is, is over 12,000 people. 
Um, so like you said, can't have one-on-one -on -one conversations with everybody, but those videos have really been fantastic. They've been really transparent and authentic in helping us to understand what's going on, business continuity plans, and, and just, I find that communication and transparency are so incredibly helpful in these times. And, and it might not always be the, the best news that you're hearing, but the honesty and the transparency comes through and it, it just makes you feel so cared for as an employee. So I think the video, the mention of the video idea is such a wonderful thing. Um, and then also you touched on charity and I know it's something that's near and dear to you. And I know that you're very, very involved, as I mentioned with housing families. Um, so I'd love for you to just share a little bit about that because it's such important work that you do, uh, especially in light of everything that's going on because a lot of these families are hard hit. So anything you'd like to share about housing families? Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, I've been involved with housing families for over 10 years now. I've actually, I'm, I'm, I'm currently chair of the board. Um, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing organization. Uh, we're headquartered in Malden. Uh, we have about 180 units of shelter and affordable housing. So. Um, many might not realize this, but you know, like you hear the Pine Street Inn or Rosie's Place, and those are open door where if you're a homeless man or woman, you can go into one of those places and get a bed for the night. If you're a family though, when you get displaced, you actually go through the state and the state gives you a voucher and that voucher used to bring you to a motel and the motel system didn't work and we didn't have enough shelter services, but we've actually helped and worked with the state to expand on shelter and, and, and to really change that whole process. Um, we work with a family once they've been in either a near homeless situation to help them not be evicted or once they are homeless to actually bring them into shelter, help stabilize the family. We have folks that work with them. We have a children's program that does after school work with kids, which that's been a massive challenge right now too, but they're doing a lot of stuff through Zoom, trying to keep kids stabilized and in, in, in routines. Um, it's an amazing, amazing program. It's been around for 30 years, but it's, a, it, it's really, it's, it, we do, it's a wonderful organization. And we, we know that unfortunately coming out of this is going to be probably a greater demand for that kind of a service that, uh, you know, we're looking at opportunities where we think there's going to be some changes in commercial real estate. And perhaps that opens the door to start doing shelter development, which the state really needs to do. And we've been working uh, with folks and Governor, uh, Governor Baker just around how to expand on the shelter services and affordable housing in the state as well. So you just, number one, thank you so much for the work that you do. Um, and number two, we will uh, be sharing a link when we share this out on LinkedIn. Um, I'll sh make sure to share a link under that post as well to housing families in case anyone wants to learn more. Um, but you just mentioned something that we've been having a lot of great conversations with C-level executives talking a lot about what you just mentioned it lightly, but commercial real estate and given that talent acquisition and, and people are you know, so much of your focus. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you think work will change as a result of what we're going through now, um, specifically kind of touching upon how people are going to prefer to work going forward. Great, great question. Yeah, we, we've, we've often been, been a big proponent in talking to our clients about, you know, would they consider allowing some level of remote work or work from home balance? And and explaining to them that those that have moved to that type of a model or have been able to tie that model in, showing them the benefits that they see on, on the expanded candidate pools that they can go after, or the different skill sets that they can bring in, and, and how it can actually impact their company in a positive way. I, I do think this is going to be something that, that you know, I don't, do I think everyone's going to completely work from home? No, I do think there's something to be said about human interaction and being together and working as a team together. But I think it's going to change the way that we do it. And I, I, you know, I, I know myself, we've always had a component that have, has been virtual, but we had people that, you know, would regularly come into the office. And, you know, I, I can even see with us, it's, we're going to see more of, you know, somebody wants to work from home two or three days a week, even more that used to come into the office. I don't see an issue with that. I think there's going to be a time where there's certain components, certain things that you might schedule meetings a little differently. You might schedule team get togethers a little differently. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, the need to really, there's, there's challenges with it. You know, there's a whole level of how do I actually engage and manage folks? How do I, uh, and, and even when you start thinking about the interview side of this, and there's a whole slew of things we can talk about there, but how do I, you know, how do we continue to keep our culture in place if we don't have people coming in, which is, it, it's a, they're challenging things, but I think, Frankly, you know, just looking at the Boston community, we got a lot of smart people. I think we can figure this stuff out. I think we are figuring it out on the fly right now. So uh, I, I'm hopeful that we see we see more of that and the ability because I think it's going to help. I think it makes us all stronger if we if we have that diversity. So, 
Thank you. Really, really interesting. And I'm fascinated by this topic and how work is going to change very dynamically because of this inflection point, I think. Um, but given, again, that the talent acquisition is, is such a focus of yours, you touched on virtual interviewing, right? So I, I know there are people that are continuing to have to interview through this. There will be a time where when we come out of this, virtual interviewing might still be because of things that are going on, something that people need to do. So I'd love your thoughts on what is the best way to, you know, for people that have always interviewed people in person and that are trying to assess a candidate fit, so much of that people have relied so heavily on in-person interactions. What advice do you have to offer people going forward on, on approaching potentially virtual interviews? Great question. Let's, um, you know, I'll even take that from the, because there's a lot of things we can, we can touch on, but let, I'm going to kind of draw on a, a that piece that we started with, with Sophia and, you know, her, what she was doing to make a choice on a college, the culture piece in, in getting, if you think about a candidate that's interviewing um, online and in, let's say this was an interview right now, you want to also display your culture. You want to get that person to understand like why you guys are unique and the differences there and some of the things that make you guys special and to also make sure that the candidate likes that and is interested in those things. So, coming back to that video component and some of the things you can do with that. So on a personal experience, Sophia was determining between this small school in Wisconsin and the university of Miami. Um, very different, very different schools. One's huge. And in, in Florida where, you know, you, as parents, we can go and visit and have a cocktail outside. Uh, one's in the middle of winter, half the year, and it's very cold. But not having gone to either campus, there were a lot of things they use social media for, and I think we can do this in the workplace as well, where they were doing um, uh, takeovers on, um, and I'm looking for the word here, it was on Instagram. They were doing, so they had students doing Instagram takeovers, walking around campus, showing things off, and we can have our employees do that. We can have employees actually videoing themselves, doing the FaceTime thing, grouping these videos together, pulling together things that our teams are doing, cultural things showing our teams at work, showing how they work together, um, and, and really displaying that so that a candidate that's now trying to consider, hey, do I, you know, do I want to go work you know, at, at company XYZ? Do I want to take a job at Ultimate? They get that sense that in, we need to build that stuff so that they can then you know, put themselves into that environment and feel like, yeah, this, is, this feels good. This feels like it's for me, or this might not be the right one for me. But being able to kind of have those things and, and build them out and then use social media, especially things like Instagram and Facebook in, in ways that we might not be using them now, these tools will actually help us with, uh, with some of these virtual recruitment challenges that are out there. Um, I'm rambling. <laughs> oh, you just blew my mind a little bit, honestly. I, I'll tell you, I expected to hear some stuff about LinkedIn and about how to interview via Zoom. I honestly hadn't given thought to the whole social media piece of it, but you're right. That's so important. I've already seen that changing. I Just the fact that we're doing this, this Zoom meeting, right? We're finding that that need for connection because we're all isolated at this time has become so important for people. And I do think social media, to your point helps people to feel more connected and feel like they get a better sense of others um, in a time like this where we can't do that in person. So fantastic yeah. advice. And, and thank you. I, really something interesting that I, I hadn't given thought to. Yeah, so. Dave, I can, uh, I can uh, second that because uh, my daughter was very similar, had to choose between yeah. four schools, only two of which she actually visited. And she had this complex spreadsheet. And, uh, you know, I was looking on the college sites for virtual tours and some didn't have them and I was dead in the water, but a different generation, right? Different tools. She was on YouTube looking at, you know, student videos of the campus and there's so many other resources. So I think it really does talk to different generations in the workplace too and, uh, how, you know, we might need to change our mindset a little. She was able to choose, uh, Choose a college just based on what was out there in social media, or at least yeah, answer kids. all of her questions. I think we've seen good examples from our kids. <laughs> there was a, a separate video that Cheryl and I watched that was uh, of somebody that it just wasn't related to the school that was driving through La Crosse, Wisconsin. And La Crosse, Wisconsin, we've now come to find out, is it's an old brewery town, and uh, it actually has the most bars per capita uh, in the United States. <laughs> so as we're watching this video and this guy's pointing out all these bars, we're thinking that originally we were like, oh, well, she's going to go to the small little, you know, the small Catholic college in Wisconsin as opposed to the University of Miami. And then we're like, 
hey, were we spoofed here? <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the other things I wanted to ask, on a more somber note, you, you mentioned uh, in the beginning having to furlough employees, and I know that there are people joining us and listening in that have had to furlough and in some cases lay off people. You shared when we spoke kind of in preparation for this conversation, you talked a little bit about helping employees navigate this time in their life work journey and also preparing in the future in case that's necessary. I'd love if you could share some of that advice with the people on this line, because I think, again, as you're having those difficult conversations, people really are looking to help their employees in any way they can. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, so so we did this with our team and now we have our team doing it with others as well. And and. We were, we, we really, you know, we wanted to make sure, because you're seeing every day a list of new people that have been furloughed. And, you know, the first thing we had said to the team was, hey, look, is you, you know, you guys naturally want to help people. And you, know, you might not be able to naturally help them get a new job. And, and frankly, a lot of these folks are going to want to go back to the place that they just got furloughed from. And they might have that opportunity. And hopefully they do. Because hopefully, you know, 90% of everybody that's been furloughed is going to go back to the same place. Because that just says hey, we're all getting back to normal and, and things are, are getting, you know, getting back to that stage. That said, there's going to be some time where people have time on their hands. They're looking for things to do. And, you know, we should be giving them advice on, hey, why don't you take the time to update your LinkedIn profile? But also think about the network that you have, people that you haven't connected with recently, people that, you know, maybe, you know, if they're younger employees, maybe it's, it's, it's connections to professors in, in schools that they, you know, alumni that they haven't reached out to recently. Maybe there's networks there that they can get involved with. Most alumni networks, by the way, are doing virtual happy hours and they're trying to connect. Most schools are doing these things. Um, I'm a member of the UMass club. I'm a UMass alum. We're doing virtual meet, virtual meet and greets every week now, uh, just to try to keep the you know alumni uh, base going. So we've we've talked to our team about you know programs to reach out. We're actually pulling something together to actually do you know like, like there's going to be a one pager on LinkedIn updates, a one pager on you know things to do to kind of help enhance your network. And even they go even if somebody goes back to work at the same place, if they take the next thirty days and they start in, in implementing these things, it gives them something to feel like you know, I'm doing something every day. They're not just getting up and saying, I got nothing to do. They feel like they've got some tasks that they can start to align with and it keeps them mentally in the game and it, and it makes them, you know, happier about what they're, you know, what not happier, but what they're able to deal with what they're experiencing better. So. No, I think that's wonderful. And the other thing that I've seen that's great because I, it's people helping people. And I've genuinely seen out there a lot of companies that are making I know we're doing it. I know other companies um, out there are also making materials available to people for um, professional development purposes for free. So I think that's another great thing to encourage people. If you have the time, if you are furloughed, if you are laid off, take the time to develop yourself, to enhance your skills. Um, because like you said, it's we were talking again before this call about some of the things we've had time to do that we wouldn't otherwise in our jobs had time to do. And I know that's not the case for everyone. I know we have some, some very, very busy yourself as CEO. We have some very busy HR professionals on the phone, but if you do have employees that are in a layoff or furlough situation, it is a great opportunity for them to take that time to focus on skills um, and development. So uh, wonderful advice. And, uh, and I know I said, as, as we kind of jumped in, given everything that's going on around us right now, uh, these conversations, you know, sometimes take an optimistic tone, sometimes a little bit more somber. Um, and so that's why we love to kind of close things out with our Thankful Thursdays segment, just to add a, you know, a little bit of cheer um, and have some fun. So, uh, so want to finish up and wrap up with that. So Dave, first and foremost, best silver lining moment. So love to understand what the biggest challenge is that you face in your career, but how you feel it made you better. Uh, I, great question. I would say the first thing is 2008, uh, you know, what we went through in 2008 and the, the challenges we faced then big, big, you know, I, I joked, I joked, but I referenced earlier saying we, we hoped we didn't have to break glass and open that jar back and pull that book out. But because we'd been through it, um, we knew the things to do and it allowed us again to be able to be respectful to our team and put things in place that we'll get through. No, we will. We, you know, we've got great, we've, we've, got great advisors around us. We've got good people that we, we talk to and we run things by. And it was 2008 really that, that allowed us to understand and know what to do. If we didn't experience that right now, we might be saying, Oh my God, can we make it? We're going to make it. We'll be fine. So that's, that'd be my silver lining moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's wonderful. And I think it's great to hear for everybody on the line. So wonderful. 
And then uh, this is one of my favorite questions you get to ask our guests, but uh, your favorite restaurant. So what's that first place that you guys are running to when we can go back out again? <laughs> so Cheryl and I, we, we kind of consider us somewhat foodies. We love to go out to dinner. We, we, we go out a lot um, it, and it's killing us because we, we really enjoy going. We have so many restaurants we love. The place I'll actually go to first though, it, it's, uh, it's actually across the street from our office in North Andover. It's called Jamie's Restaurant. He's actually closed right now. He, he decided not to keep open for, you know, t- t- for takeout. Jamie's a, a friend and he's someone that I can't wait till he opens to go over and get a drink and give him a huge hug. Um, so I just, I just miss the place dearly and, uh, and he's, a, he's a good man. So I, I know they'll make it through too. But that's where we're going to go first. <laughs> oh, well, wonderful, wonderful! I'm sure Jamie will appreciate uh, appreciate the plugs. So if you're in the North Andover area, <laughs> you know where to go. Um, and then, last but not least, so favorite guilty pleasure? Uh, what book, Netflix show, podcast is kind of getting you through right now? You guys might laugh, but um, with Don Cheadle, Black Monday. Um, <laughs> of all shows to actually watch, watch a show about the, uh, the market crash of. Uh, <laughs> of the eighties, but it's, it's a, it's a dark comedy and uh, it, it's been, it's, it's provided some good humor. So if you haven't seen it, I think it's season three right now that it's on. So uh, yeah, it's a, it, it's been, it's been a good one. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Dave, I can't thank you enough for the chat today. Uh, we're so grateful for your time and the insight that you've shared with everyone and really look forward to, uh, to connecting and, and hearing about all the wonderful things uh, going forward for talent retriever coming out of this. You guys, I love this thing, by the way. Thank you very much. Cause this was, this was actually, it, it, hopefully it helped others, but it was real helpful for me just to talk too. So I love this. This was really good. So Jason and Nicole, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate this. And, and just so you guys know, there's a lot of talk. I'm in a number of advisory groups. The, the big thing that people keep talking about is the strength of the HR community right now. And people respect the work that's being done in the HR community. And because it's, it's challenging, it's tough. It's always challenging and tough. But right now, I think, I think there's an opportunity for, I think people are really taking much more kind of paying more attention and realizing the importance of strong HR human resources professionals and that skill in what it means. And um, unfortunately it takes crises like these for people to understand that and realize it, but thanks for everything you guys are doing. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's much needed. Absolutely. Our HR professionals are our caregivers and uh, they're doing a lot of caregiving for a lot of people right now. So we're incredibly grateful to them and to you, Dave. Thank you again for joining us. Really looking forward to continuing the conversation with everyone next week. We'll be joined by Paula Heller, VP of People and Culture at Kripalu. She'll be touching on some really, really important and timely topics, um, specifically around mental health, stress, and resiliency techniques that you can use with your employees in difficult times like what we're going through today. So really timely, excellent subject matter, and Paula's just an incredible person. So look forward to you joining us then.